Hey there, welcome back again. Mr. Garner here with our next uh, video. In our last video, again, we were taking covalent formulas, or excuse me, covalent names and giving the formulas. And in this video, we're actually going to do the opposite. We're going to take the formulas of both ionic and covalent materials, and we're going to give the names. We're going to be able to go from name into formula and formula into name. You should be able to go uh, both ways. So in your booklet, your yellow booklets, again, that's what we're using, the yellow booklets, uh, say bonding on the top, and then it says formula writing and nomenclature on the bottom. You should see pages in there that have the full name, like the written words, and then blanks for the actual symbols. And then we actually see just the symbols and you have blanks for the name. So our focus here is on this one. And one of the other things that you have to look at, and we're going to get to this in a little bit, and we're going to pull off of is uh, table E. And so we got to revisit table E, which is the polyatomic ions. And a polyatomic, again, is when you have more than one atom and more than one type of element in there. And so the first thing we're going to do in, in your homework at the end is going to be page 28, which is the ionic materials. I want you to do and finish 1 through 15. We're going to do four of them together. So you're going to have nine more to do out of those 15. And then on page 31, these I find a little bit easier and quicker. You have uh, 19 to do, 1 through 19, which is the covalent ones, and we're going to do four of them again together as well. So what we have to look at and what we're going to be pulling from again when we get with the ionic is kind of do, to do the reverse crisscross method because some of these might need the stock system. And what we need to look at and consider is what those numbers are. Again, those are oxidation numbers. And one of the next videos, we're going to talk about how to actually calculate the correct oxidation number that's used. And so as a reminder, the oxidation number, for example, in any element, so for example, oxygen is a minus two. We're looking at the top right of the box in our reference tables. So I know it's hard to see, but we'll zoom in here, try to. So if we look at any element, so for example, there's carbon in the top right, we have a couple to choose from. And these are basically relating to how many electrons in a bond are either gained or lost to form either a positive or negative charge. So when we look at this and we look them up, we know oxygen's minus two. We're doing the reverse crisscross. Two is the only option. If that went there, when there's no number, of, again, that would be a 1. So plus 1 minus 2, there's no other options to choose from. So the only thing we're dealing with here is just sodium and oxygen. So when we name it, when we name our actual ionic materials, the first word is always the same. So we don't change it. So sodium stays sodium. But remember, it's that second letter, if it's a single element, you typically change the letter to be I-D-E. So sodium oxide is our answer for number one, okay? Sodium oxide, we don't have to change anything else. Now, if we do that reverse crisscross, now there is an error, I'm jumping to number four. So we went from number one, we're jumping to number four right now. There is an error in the booklet in order to make this work. The two and three need to be switched. So really it should be Fe2S3 because when you look in your booklet, S or sulfur has a couple options. It has minus two, and then I believe if I look quick, it has... Uh, plus four and plus six. And the one that would fit this, if we do our reverse crisscross, that two came from minus two. The three, therefore, has to come from over here, plus three. When we look at iron, iron is element 26. Iron has a plus two and a plus three charge that's possible. So we're gonna use the plus three. So what we need to remember, that first element name again stays the same, iron. But because I have two options to choose from, I have the option for two and I have the option for, for three, we need to call it the number or the Roman numeral that we used for the number. So we use the plus three, therefore this is Roman numeral three. Sulfur, we change to sulfide. So again, we do our reverse crisscross. We figure out what the number really came from. The three came from iron three. The two came from the sulfur. So really, we have iron 3 sulfide. So our final answer, iron 3 sulfide. <clears throat> now, number 6 and number 9, again, I'm, I'm skipping around a little bit just to give you some of the answers, some difficult ones, some easy ones. Number 6 and 9 need table E in addition to your reference table. Now, in your booklet, there is a table E. There's also a table E in the reference table, of course. So make sure you're using that. And so, again, table E on the reference table has the polyatomic ions, and it has the charges that are available. So when we look at SO4, anytime you see more than two capital letters, 
think that's a polyatomic. So we have the calcium, and then we also have the SO4. We have the nickel on this one, then we have the PO4. And we'll get to this parentheses in a minute, and we'll refresh your memory on our little MC hammer rule, okay? Now, we want to look again, just like we did up here and we did up here, we want to look at what charges are possibly available. Calcium, if we go back and look in the reference table, calcium is a plus two charge, sulfate is minus two. And what we learned is that if they have equal and opposite charges, they basically cancel out. So I don't need to worry about anything because there's no other numbers there, there's no parentheses. Basically it came from the original numbers, we just name them as they are. So calcium, the table E part is the actual name. You don't have to change it. If it's an individual element, they changed it to IDE endings. But when it's something like a polyatomic, we just name it after the real thing that we actually see in the reference table. So when we look it up in the reference table, it's down there in the bottom right, SO4 was minus two sulfate. Okay, you actually name it the actual thing that it is listed in the reference table. Okay, so calcium sulfate is our answer here. The last one, again, as we look through our charges, and if we go back to the reference table, I believe I may have written this one backwards too, so let me check for a second. I think I wrote it backwards in my paper. I just want to get to the right page here, the actual periodic table. Let me check the booklet. Yeah, so what we want here, we're gonna do the same thing. I, I think I made a mistake in the booklet here when we printed this years ago, okay? This should be a three here and a two there, okay? Because again, if you look at the actual material in the reference table, on table E, PO4 has a minus three charge. That three came from the minus three, okay? The two came from up here, plus two, so again, this one, just like in uh, this question up here, sorry, number four, we gotta flip those numbers around, otherwise they won't work correctly. So I apologize for that error in the booklet. Okay, so the three came from the minus three, because again, when you look up on table E, you see PO4 minus three, okay? That's the phosphate ion. The phosphate ion is PO4 minus three. When you look up nickel on the reference table, it says plus two and nickel plus three. So the question is, which one does it come from? Again, once we've switched it to make it appropriate, the two had to have crisscross instead of a three. Again, the three is the only one that is the option for phosphate. So when we're writing our answer, we have nickel, but because we use the plus two, we're gonna use Roman numeral two. Nickel two phosphate. Okay, nickel two phosphate is our final answer. Again, the first element name always stays the same. It's the second element that's a little bit different. Now, if you have two polyatomics, you just name both of the ions. So for example, you could have had something like ammonium phosphate. Okay, that could have been in there. You could have you know, other opportunities and other uh, variables in there as well. So there is our ionics. Okay, there is our ionics. Again, so you have to use table E, you have to use your reference table, possibly use the charges. That brings us to the next step. Now we go to page 31. So the next part of this is, is actually naming covalence. And, and I always, again, find these to go a little bit easier. And again, we're gonna review, we're gonna use one through 10. We don't see all of them here, but as you go through, you'll, you'll maybe see more. So again, one is mono, two is di. We got tri, tetra, pent, hex, hept, octnone, and dec. As you go down, all you're doing is looking for numbers. So like, for example, there's a three, there's no number there, but we have to remember if there's no number, it really represents one. Okay, there's a two there, but this is one. This is one, this is one. There's a two there and a four there. Your first element, again, if there's no number with the first element, you can just name the first element. The second element, if there's no number, it's a different story. You have to put the mono down. Okay, so if you remember in the last video, we talked about carbon monoxide versus carbon dioxide. Okay, so this one, we name our first element nitrogen, and this would be monoxide. So we're going to change the element name to IDE endings. So nitrogen monoxide is our answer. Mono means one. We have chlorine and we have fluorine. This would be chlorine, but because of the three, now I have to add my prefix. Remember, the prefix goes in the beginning, so monoxide. My prefix here, trifluoride. Okay, I put that prefix in there. So one chlorine and three fluorines, chlorine trifluoride. I'm skipping a little bit. Number four, 
because I wanted to put an, uh, at least let you see some that have numbers in the first one. So, and I have no number here, but again, it represents one. We're looking at our chart. Two is the prefix. So di, I'm still using my first element name, nitrogen. And then I go back very similar to this one up here, monoxide. Okay, di-nitrogen monoxide. So I have my di prefix for my two, mono or mon for one, monoxide. And then we, again, the first element stays the same as the name. The second element has oxide at the end. Very similar, still using nitrogen and oxygen, though now we have the same start, dinitrogen. Number four is tetra, tetroxide. Okay, often you don't list the two uh, vowels together. It's not necessarily tetraoxide, just tetroxide. So we have our di together and we have our tetra together. Now, if on a test or quiz you had written tetraoxide, I'd still give you credit for it, okay? Because I know what you're talking about. So hopefully you've uh, found some, uh, of something of value here that will help you as you go through and name those. So again, your homework in the yellow booklet, page 28, numbers 1 through, five, uh, 1 through 15. I've already done four of them with you, so you have nine left. And page 31, numbers 1 through 19. Again, I did four of them with you, so you got 15 left, okay? So all you got to do, take some action. If you have questions, just put them in the comments below. And... Uh, we're here to help you succeed. If you again, if you're not understanding, understanding this, please write a question and you know we'll kind of follow up with you. All right. Look forward to the next video and your next assignment, which again, we're gonna be getting a little more in depth into looking at some of these numbers and calculating where those charges come from. So for example, the PO4 minus three is gonna be from that. So look for the next video uh, for that, how to calculate charges in an ion. All right, we'll talk to you later.